hello welcome to my channel so in this video I am going to discuss my BRC interview experience so before going to the interview questions I would recommend you to uh, note some points so before the starting of your interview you have to verify all your original documents from a counseling committee so there will be a counseling committee will which will verify all your documents so you have to be available available there with your all your original documents and after that you will be called by interview committee for the interview and also at the start of your interview you have to hand over your all your documents to the committee so that they will know about your about you and so so my suggestion is to put all your uh, documents in a file which contains uh, and transparent envelope so transparent envelope so you should buy a good file now let's start with my interview questions so there were three there were three members and they sent me to to the board uh, and asked me to write Maxwell's equations so I wrote the Maxwell equation so I should keep one point in mind that you should not say like del dot e you should you should it should be like divergence of electric field is equals to charge density divided by epsilon naught divergence of magnetic field equal to zero curl of electric field is equal to rate of change of magnetic field so you should be like it's not saying like mathematical formula and I and some expected questions are they can ask from you uh, these were not asked from me uh, it's like what is divergence what is curl how Maxwell the equation will modify if magnetic magnetic monopoles exist so you can uh, look for the solution of answer of these questions uh, now now they move to now they ask me to draw a glass cylinder and up bound and bound a copper wire over the cylinder and suppose alternating current is flowing through the wire so this is solenoid and they asked me to uh, ask me the, the magnitude and the direction of magnetic field in the center of the solenoid so and the next question was is there any electric field uh, outside the solenoid and if yes how induced electric field magnitude will vary with distance r from the center of the solenoid so these were the questions asked by one of the member of the committee and these are actually electrodynamics questions now it, now next uh, member of the committee asked me the questions from quantum mechanics so he asked me to draw 1d potential box infinite potential box and write its wave function and energy eigenvalue so you know the formula you can write it and they are they then the and then he asked me to draw a wave function for the ground state psi 1 so you can see this this is the ground state wave function for infinite 1d potential box where L is the width of the box so he then asked what does a wave function signifies so you know wave function does not have any physical significance and uh, the modulus the square of the modulus of the wave function gives the probability density function so next was like draw psi1 and square of modulus of square of psi1 on the same plot so you have to be careful that this this probability density function will be smoother than its uh, wave function so you, you can draw it you, sh you should try this and next question was to draw ground state wave function for the finite potential box so in the finite potential box this is this is the finite potential box so v naught okay then then he asked me to this like the ground state energy again value for the uh, finite potential box is it is it larger or uh, smaller than the uh, as, as compared to fin finite potential box so they I was stuck at that point and they gave me the hint like he said to use he said me to use Heisenberg 
uncertainty principle so sometimes they will try they will help you if you are uh, desperate about this question they will try to help you so the committee is somewhat helpful so they help me to find the answer uh, now the third member asked me about the nuclear physics so moving to nuclear physics questions so he asked what happens to a free neutron so if you know free neutron it is unstable so it decays to proton electron and an anti neutrino is emitted out and then he asked me like can you draw the energy spectrum of a beta particle emitted so in beta decay the electrons emitted are of uh, are of continuous energy so the spectrum is continuous so you have to draw this plot this plot you have to draw then he asked why energy spectrum is continuous and then which physical quantities are conserved in a neutron decay so in this neutron decay this neutron decay what physical quantities are conserved so you know the energy angular momentum charge these physical quantities are conserved and also the lepton number the quantum number lepton number is also conserved it's a quantum is a quantum number which is also conserved and then he asked how many asks how many types of radioactive decay are there you know three types of radioactive decay are there and I explained the radioactivity decay law what is half life and at the last the the tricky question of my interview and some and they were trying to distract me uh, they were checking my confidence so they may do with do with yourself also so you should be uh, careful so if you are confident about your concept you should not be distracted so the question was suppose there is one radioactive atom so what will happen to it after one half life will it decay or not answer us in terms of zero or one so you know this is a statistical phenomena this is purely probabilistic so we can't say that it will decay or not so it's it's probabilistic we, we can't say about whether the atom will decay or no or not so this was the tricky question uh, and the last question of my interview and uh, so i will i will thank uh, for watching this uh, my winter experience video and you may subscribe so thanks